Good afternoon. Hey, it's Mike here again for another Tech Talk. So what I wanted to talk about today is I wanted to talk about, it's kind of a, I'm not sure how to best frame this topic, so we'll just kind of dig into it. It's kind of about what do you have control over and what don't you have control over and how that has an impact on your attitude, which inevitably has an impact on everything. So kind of how this came up is that uh, over the last couple of days, just had a really bad 24 hour period. I had uh, some personal stuff that happened right before I was going to sleep and it kind of weighed on my mind and I didn't get a good night's sleep, which I know for myself, if I don't get a good night's sleep, that that can often make my fuse a little bit short and make me not as open-minded. And so I know that knew that going in the day, you know, it might be a little bit challenging, but I was going to get through it. And basically it just seemed like one after the other, I just kept running into walls and, you know, with everything that had kind of happened, it just kind of really put me into a bad mood. And it wasn't, it put me in a bad mood. I put myself into a bad mood because I allowed these things all to have an impact on me. And so it, it impacted my, um, my you know, friends online, working with my team. And, you know, at the end of the day, everything worked out. But when I was, you know, just kind of taking a look back at it, I realized that everything that set me off, I had zero control over any of the issues that caused these blockers. They were all things outside of my control. They were all things that I could have never seen and simply happened. But yet I let these things that I had zero control over inevitably build up. And then I allowed myself to, which I have control over my attitude, to put myself into a bad attitude. And I think that a lot of times we find that we put ourselves, we, we say, you know, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And maybe you did, but chances are it might not be something that you might've had something that put you there, but you allowed yourself, you, you've got the choice of where you want your attitude to be and wh how you want to go about it and how you want to face those things. So it got me thinking about a story that I, I really wanted to share with you, uh, going back to 2004. So in 2004, I'd been training for an, uh, Ironman Wisconsin, which is an Ironman distance triathlon. So it's been about 18 months training for this race. So over this period of time, I'd learned to competitively swim. I trained hundreds of hours, spent a lot of time away from my wife. And, and we also had a new dog and actually we didn't have a new dog. He came to our two years later, but I spent a lot of time away and I put, put a lot of energy into it and going into race day, I felt great, felt ready for the race. You know, I felt I fully prepared everything. Swim went great, get on the bike. Within two miles, I got a flat tire. So let me give you a little bit of backstory. Over the, the four to five weeks training up to Ironman Wisconsin, I had about eight flat tires. So I was fully prepared on what to do with a flat, flat tire. I knew how to deal with it. I'd gone through everything. I changed everything on my bike that you could possibly change and modify to ensure there was nothing wrong with my equipment. And I get a flat tire. And so flat tire, you know, not much I can deal with that except getting a change. I had everything I needed to change it. So I started changing it on the side of the road and I was facing out and everybody kept coming by and go, Hey, do you need anything? Do you need anything? And I'm like, you know, trying to be no nice. And then finally I turned around and put my back to the road, not because I wanted to be rude, but I wanted to get this done and by recognizing everybody that come came by and thanking them for, you know, offering help, it was just causing me to take more time. So finally get my tire changed. And then 10 miles later, I get into gastrointestinal or GI distress. So imagine about 10 miles into a 112 mile bike ride that you have GI distress and I basically, my stomach was bloated and I'm not going to, I'm going to spare you the gory details, but in the end, what ended up happening is 
I missed the race cutoff to go to the run by four minutes. Four minutes. And at the end, when after I finished, they're like, sorry, you can't finish. They took my timing chip. And then somebody came and they put a camera in my face and they asked me, oh, how do you feel? How do your race feel? And, you know, there were some people that were in the same position that I was in that were pretty irate. And I could have been irate, but I looked back at my day and I'm like, you know, things just didn't work out for me that day. That there were some things that, that you know, happened and, you know, I, I had a good, you know, I had a good attitude about it. And so then I met up with my family went home, got some fluids. And then my buddy Josh was also racing that day. So we decided to go back out and uh, watch Josh. And Josh was kind of struggling during the run. And so I ended up, I had my shoes on. So I ended up basically jumping in and running along with him for a while. And then he seemed to get into a groove and he got a running partner. And there was another gentleman on the course that was struggling. So I ended up running the, the remainder of the marathon run walk with this gentleman until about, you know, 800 meters from the, the end. And so he was able to finish. So, you know, I allowed my attitude to, to keep a positive attitude, even though I didn't finish the race. And it's one of the, the best accomplishments I've had, even though two years later, I ended up finishing an Ironman. I still look on that 24 season as a or 2004 season as a success because I kept such a great attitude through it. And then I finished in, in 2006 and I kind of look back at this and I'm like, you know, how did I make it through that adversity? It's because I had learned this theory from a gentleman named Rich Strauss. He used to teach triathlons and he had basically, I believe it was four pillars. And the one pillar which really sticks out for me is this thing called the box theory. And Rich is from the Navy, and I believe it was a military thing that he basically taught you that the only things you have control over while you're racing, and this is kind of in life too, is a foot around you, whether you're in the swim, the bike, and the run. So I use that throughout my racing, and I try to keep that in mind from time to time, day to day. Because that 2006 race that I ended up finishing... The weather was terrible. It rained the entire day. I was on the course for under 17 hours. So about 17 hours. I was soaked. But I had trained for it. I had prepared. I had the right clothes. There were a lot of people on the cor course that got hypothermia because they weren't prepared. I was fully prepared for that weather. And I didn't let it get me down because I knew that I had no control over the weather, but I had a control over my attitude and getting to the finish line and doing what I had set out to do. So, you know, I look back at the, the last couple of days and, you know, it's a, it's one of those learning moments. You kind of learn that, you know, sometimes things aren't in your control and you don't have that control over them, but you fully have the ability to control how those things impact you and impact your attitude. So hopefully that is helpful for you because I know a lot of us, we go through from time to time and that doesn't mean that you're never going to have a bad attitude because sometimes you just have to have a bad at attitude for things because it just happens. Uh, but most of the time, much of what we do, things aren't underneath our control. And as long as we've prepared and as long as we're doing the things that we need to do, we can look back and we can go, you know, things didn't work out the way I wanted it to, but I kept a good attitude because I, I tried my hardest. I did what I needed to do and I got through to the end. So that's kind of all I have for today. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you like these, please comment, please like, please follow. Uh, as always, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Michael Bender, and we'll see you next time.